Today I'm looking at OCO or one cancels the other. This might be where you place two pending orders and when one of those activates to a live trade, you want to cancel the other order. Uh, perhaps you're bracketing the price with some kind of breakout strategy. This is part one where I'm covering MetaTrader 5. I'll cover MetaTrader 4 in part two and I'll also create a playlist of all of the videos in this series and I'll put the link to the playlist in the description to the video. To demonstrate what I'm doing, I've created a very simple expert advisor. All this advisor does is create buy and buy stop and sell stop trades around the current price. So I have it here. If I put this onto the chart, uh, I've got how many trade pairs to place. I'm just going to make that one for the time being. If I make that a higher number, then it will place another pair at every new bar that opens. And I'm just using that as part of the demonstration. How far from the opening price? I'll make that 200 pips so that the trades appear close on the chart. Uh, stop loss take profit points. So it will just make these trades with a fixed stop loss and take profit of 50 points. And of course I need a lot size. So nothing special there. Okay. And we can see on the chart, I've got a buy stop just above the price and a sell stop below the price with their own stop loss and take profit. And so what I want to happen is that when one of these activates, the other closes. Currently the expert doesn't do that and we'll add the code for that OCO. Let's get rid of these. And now let's go to the code. Here's the code I have in the expert advisor. I've got the inputs for the trade counter, the gap points, stop loss, take profit points, and the volume. I'm setting up some global variables. I've got a trade counter here so that I can copy this number into the trade counter and then decrement that as I place new trades. Uh, and I'm just converting this trade gap in points to a value. So I've got a double for trade gap and the same for the stop loss take profit. I've included the trade class here so that I can place the trades. And after that, it's reasonably simple. If the trade counter is less than or equal to zero, then I've run out of pairs that I can create. So I just return. I've got this bit of code so that I only place trades at the beginning of a new bar. And then I simply open an order and that's a function inside this expert for a buy stop and for a sell stop. And I'm just capturing the two tickets for those and then decrementing that trade counter. And the open order here just calculates the opening and stop loss and take profit prices depending on the order type. And then this is just a utility function to convert that number of points for the gap and the stop loss take profit into a double value. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, to convert this for OCO, I need to track these pairs of tickets. So I'm just going to create a function or I'm going to make a call to the function first. So this function, and I'm about to write this, will simply take those two tickets. It doesn't matter what they are. Um, and by the way, I'm running this demonstration for a buy stop and a sell stop. These could be any two pending orders and it will work the same way. So you could have a buy stop and a buy limit or a sell stop and a sell limit. So this will work either way. Now I'll just go to the end of the code and I'll create that OCO add. Now I think what I'll do before I write any more of this, I'm going to create a structure to hold these ticket pairs. So the pair itself will just hold two ticket numbers. I'm also going to create a constructor for this to make it a little easier to set these up so I don't need to go to extra lines of code to assign the values to tickets one and two. So when I simply create a variable of type SOCO pair, I can pass in these two values as part of the constructor and we'll just assign them to ticket one and two. And I'm also going to create an array to hold these pairs. As you saw in the first example, I only create one pair, but I do have that counter. So it will allow me to set up multiple pairs that might be running all at the same time. So I'm just going to put them into an array and that's an array of type SOCO pair. So in the OCO add, I'm going to add a quick check first to see that ticket one and ticket two, I should have said ticket two, 
There we go. Uh, let's see that ticket one and ticket two are not zero. And then I'm just going to count the number of elements in the array, add one more, and then insert a new structure at the end of the array. So I'm just declaring my variable of type SOCO pair, and you can see here I'm using the constructor to pass in ticket one and ticket two. I'm increasing the size of the array to count plus one, and then that last element is going to be element number count, and I just assign pair into that. So that takes care of adding this pair of tickets to the OCO pairs array. So that takes care of building up an array of these tickets, but what I want to do now is monitor so that if one of those tickets converts to an actual trade, then I can close the other. And I'm going to do that with the on trade transaction event. So the on trade transaction happens every time some kind of trade transaction occurs, and that includes converting an order into a position. And the important information that I need is all in this trans variable of type MQL trade transaction. So the type of transaction I'm looking for is trade transaction order delete, and this will happen when the order converts to a position because the order is deleted at that point. And when that happens, I'm going to call yet another function, but I'm going to call OCO close, and I'm going to pass in trans.order, which is the ticket number of the order that has just been deleted. So I'm then going to search through the array, find that order and remove it. And that's all I need to do in this event handler. Now I'll just add the OCO close function. So a standard loop, I'm counting the array of OCO pairs beginning at array size minus one while i is greater than or equal to zero. So I'm counting down through the list of OCO pairs. And if there's nothing in this array, then this will exit very quickly because I will be initialized to zero minus one, which is minus one, and just exit this loop and come straight out. So I have a test here that if that ticket number is equal to OCO pairs I dot ticket one, so I found a match at ticket one, then I call this function close order, and I haven't written that yet, but I will now. Uh, close order for OCO pairs I dot ticket two. So if ticket one's been deleted because it's either been turning into a position or it's been canceled for some other reason, then I'm going to cancel ticket two. And then I remove that item from the array of OCO pairs and that's what this OCO removed is. That's also a function that I haven't written but I'll start with the close order function and then I'll write the OCO remove. Now you'll see that this condition is only looking at ticket one and that's because I need to then call this close order with the other ticket. I just have to duplicate this condition where I do the comparison against ticket two. So everything's the same, but in this case, I'm checking to see if the ticket number passed in here is matching ticket two, and then I call close order using ticket one from the pair. Now I'll just add that close order. So trade already has a function called order delete. I could have simply embedded this in the code below, but 
just in case of future expansion, I've created my own close order function here. Uh, and all it does then is call trade.orderDelete. You'll also see that this returns a Boolean and I'm returning that Boolean from the close order, but I'm not testing it anywhere here. If you wanted to, you could put a, an if statement here and if the close order is unsuccessful, then you can do something to deal with that. I'm just ignoring that for the time being. And all that's left is the OCO remove function now. Uh, and here in the OCO remove, I'm just using the array remove function, passing in that OCO pairs array. I want to remove the element at index, index for one element. So just removing that one and then return. I think that's everything. Let me just compile this to see. Uh, okay, I've got an error here. SOCO pair default constructor of struct is not defined. I'll tell you why I'm getting that. Here in OCO add, I'm performing this array resize. So that creates another element on the OCO pairs array. And that element is of type SOCO pair. Now, because I've declared a constructor for SOCO pair, every time I create a new variable of this type, I need to call the constructor. But the array resize can't call that constructor. So in this structure, I also need to create a default constructor that takes no values. And that's the default constructor takes no values. So it should be all right now. And it is. I'll just go back to MetaTrader and we'll see what happens now with this expert. So I add my OCO part one. I'll still leave this at one. Uh, I'll set that at 200 points gap. Everything else should be fine. And now it's placed the two trades at the first tick. If I remove one of those By deleting it then the other goes away let me do that again on chart so it's a little easier to see so here i'll add oco part one i'll still leave this one trade pair to place i will uh, run this with multiple trade pairs but i'll do that in the strategy tester so we don't have to wait in real time for new bars to open so one trade pair 200 points apart and there we have the buy stop and the sell stop. And if I just delete one of these, I'll delete the sell stop, then the buy goes away as well. So that's what happens if one of those orders is deleted. Let's run this in the strategy tester now. So in the strategy tester, in the first pass, I'm just going to leave the number of trade pairs at one so that you can see that first one closing. And then I'll run this again with more trade pairs so you can see it also handles that. Uh, and I'm going to leave that at 550, so all the defaults apart from the trade pairs. Um, this is doesn't really matter which symbol I'm using, and I've got this in visual mode. Now let me pause that because you can't see the buy, and that's because it's too far off screen. I'll shrink that down. And as soon as that cell converted, and it's actually already closed at a small profit, I probably should have made the take profit further away. But as soon as that cell converted, the buy was closed. Back to the inputs now, and I'll change that back to five. I'll actually place them closer together so I don't have to worry about slicing the chart. And I'll make the stop loss take profit at 150 points. So we get a little bit more time on them. And I'm also going to, I don't want to repeat this for just the same dates. I'll make that, uh, I don't know, I'll just move it up to March 1st. So now beginning of the first hour, it has created one pair. I can see I've got a buy stop and a sell stop here. I'll just let that run. 
And you see as each new hour is happening, I'm getting more pairs. They're unfortunately a little bit clumped together, but you can see that it's creating multiple pairs. And now it's actually activated one of the buy trades and closed the matching cell. If I just let that run, it will eventually close all of them. So there, it closed the matching buys as it opened the cells and closed the matching cells as it opened the buy trades. And now they've all hit their either take profit or stop loss. So that's it for part one. Just to give you a quick rundown, I've created a structure to hold a pair of tickets. These could be any type of ticket because this will simply close the opposite order as soon as one of those orders is deleted. And the order is deleted when you either manually delete them or they're deleted for some other reason, or they're converted to a position. So I'm just creating a structure for SOCO pair that holds two ticket numbers. I have an array of that pair, so I can create as many pairs as I like. After I open the two matching orders, and in my case, these were buy stop and sell stop, but they could be any two orders. I just add both of those ticket numbers with this OCO add function. In the on-trade transaction, then I simply call the OCO close function, passing in that trans.order number if the type is trade transaction order delete. The OCO add does nothing more than create a variable of type OCO pair and then add that to the array of OCO pairs. And the OCO close searches that array to find a pair that matches either ticket one or ticket two to the order that has just been closed and then closes the remaining order and removes that element from the array. So that's all, short and simple. Like I said, this is part one. In part two, I will cover the same thing for MetaTrader 4. And then in parts three and four, I will show how to encapsulate this into a class so it's much easier to simply add into your expert advisors if you want to. I hope this has been useful to you. Click the like button and subscribe if you want to see more of our videos. Thank you for watching.